Hey, Block Temple fans. Okay, uh, this is Danny from Block Temple, and uh, we are really glad to uh, invite uh, Sensormo to the uh, Block Temple live stream. Thank and you. this is ABS, and uh, Sensormo will have a panel in, uh, uh, in the end of the uh, conference. It's called What is Money. So, and then tomorrow, Sensor Ma will go to the you know Taiwan Cyberpunk meetup and talking about his uh, blockchain and the uh, Bitcoin. So, uh, so what do you feel about two days? Is the conference be cool? It's okay. It's okay. I, I think it's, the, it's okay. It's okay. Well, I, I'm I'm Bitcoiner, so a, Bitcoiner? a lot uh -huh. of the topics are not that interesting for me. Uh -huh. But there is that debate with Nuriel, which is kind of fun. It's I guess. kind of fun. So. It, I heard there's a, a Bitcoin conference in San Francisco. Yeah, Bitcoin 2019. Wow, there's definitely it's a, a lot of things and, and, and showing up there, right? Yes, but okay. there's a better conference in New York. It's called Magical Crypto Conference. Oh yeah, I heard about that. So, you know, it's a, you know, Adam Back and everyone, Elizabeth Stock, everyone uh, doing the Bitcoin stuff, doing, yes. uh, getting there. Okay, so for the beginning, because uh, for Taiwan's community, they are maybe are not familiar with the uh, blockchain. Mm -hmm. But uh, as we know, uh, as I know, the blockchain is very uh, key player for the Bitcoin development. They support a lot of things uh, for their uh, BIP or others uh, around the around the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. So can you uh, give us a short intro about blockchain? Sure. So we generally say Blockstream is a Bitcoin and blockchain infrastructure company. Uh -huh. uh, we're founded in 2014 off of the Bitcoin sidechains white paper. Uh -huh. And we started uh, developing the tech, uh, R&D, building it into production. And I guess the first sidechain, production ready sidechain is the Liquid Network, which is a network of uh, exchanges. We call it an inter-exchange settlement network. So what it is is about 35 crypto exchanges, trading desks, financial institutions, that uh, are members of the network and you can move Bitcoin really rapidly within this network and also issue different assets. Uh, but we do a lot of stuff. We, we also have uh, Bitcoin developers full-time working on Bitcoin. Uh, a lot of guys work on it part-time as well because uh -huh. they love Bitcoin. Uh -huh. uh, we do a lot of cool stuff, like some things are like Blockstream Satellite that is very popular with people. <laughs> Uh, it, it sparks people's imaginations. And yeah, it's a, it's a, uh, what kind of a catastrophe will you know, make people want to use a satellite to send in money? Yeah. Uh, it's a very interesting. But in general, I'd say what we do is to augment Bitcoin. We make, make things that make Bitcoin stronger and more resilient. Okay, we will talk about that right there. Sure. And uh, uh, what's saying like uh, you mostly you're doing R&D, right? Mm -hmm. But you are a company, so do you have a part of uh, you know, to you know, make money? Yeah, so I guess for Liquid, the first step for us was to build out the network, okay. to establish the network itself. And what we're going to do next, and we kind of announced it at Consensus in uh, May, okay. is to build products on top of Liquid. So one such product is Liquid Securities. And it's a platform where people can uh, manage tokens within the Liquid network, and they can assign permissions to the tokens. So you can actually have these security tokens with different requirements like um, transfer, amount of transfer of tokens, okay. uh, which jurisdiction you can transfer tokens into. But this is a, one of the products that we'll monetize that sits on top of the Liquid Network. So does Liquid Network have a smart contract? No? Well, I think uh, the word smart contract has been corrupted by Ethereum. Uh -huh, so yeah. Bitcoin does have smart contracts and by extension Liquid does too. Uh -huh. um, Bitcoin smart contracts is multi-sig transactions, right? Okay. But what Ethereum does is they stuff the logic of the contract into the chain as well, uh -huh. which you still need an oracle, an external source of truth. Mm -hmm. So technically, you don't need to put all the data into the blockchain. You okay. just need the finality. You need the multi-sig trigger. Like, if these, this condition is met, then this is paid out. Okay, so you can do the same function, but it's different, a different concept with Ethereum. Yes, different architecture, I guess. Okay, yeah. so uh, Liquid Network is uh, getting more and more, uh, like Bitfinex is, uh, right, right now is using uh, yeah. Liquid to, to launch the LBTC. Mm -hmm. So you charge the exchange or you charge the user? Well, we have a support fee. So it's kind of the Red Hat model. There's a support fee, nominal support fee for service and maintenance, mm -hmm. as well as providing the hardware. So in the Liqu Liquid network, we have functionary boxes. And these are the boxes that are extending the blockchain. Mm -hmm. So some of the members have this box, they put it in their data center and the box is signing off on the blocks essentially and then extending the chain. Okay. So we have to produce and maintain that hardware. Okay, so you are the, com you are the company who gathering these fees and uh, running the whole... Yeah. So we take the support fees and then the, they, they could charge their end users, but I don't think right, anyone right now is charging their end users for using Liquid. Okay, so uh, 
in the future, you think uh, because you're building other things around the Bitcoin. Yes. But on the Bitcoin, do you think the Bitcoin need to change? Well, personally, I would like more uh, privacy and uh, fungibility for Bitcoin on the main chain. Uh -huh. So I think it would be a good thing if we had confidential transactions in Bitcoin's main chain. Okay, so you think uh, safety and privacy is uh, more... What's the privacy mean for the you know, Bitcoin or well, it's just uh, so the whole cryptocurrency or the blockchain? It, what it really means is like people cannot do blockchain analysis and look at where your transaction is coming from. Because that way you kind of have, uh, you develop into two pools of Bitcoin. Like one is like okay Bitcoin and one is dirty Bitcoin. Yeah. And then the, the, it kind of breaks down at that point. Okay. But the other problem is a lot of the analysis tools are not very good. And the, I guess the cutoff is kind of arbitrary too. So you might say six transactions back is a limit. Okay. And past that, we don't really care if it was a uh, touched dark market or not. But it's kind of arbitrary. And if you have these arbitrary rules in place, people can circumvent the arbitrary rules and then the system just kind of falls apart. People just say, okay, well, I don't like you and we'll just uh, say your Bitcoin is bad. Okay. So that, that's why I think we need better fungibility. We need uh, confidentiality. Okay, so, but uh, uh, it is a lot of things happening in this industry recently about you know, how to regulate the transaction of blockchains. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 think, I think blockchain may have a, you know, a very uh, different way to think about this because uh, for, the, for the exchange, for some uh, you know, industry, yeah. Businessmen, they are very says, oh, uh, trading this kind of rule is very you know optimistic. Like mm -hmm. oh, is uh, like FedEx, FedEx, uh, you know the yeah. anti -money, money laundering uh, guidelines. They 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 require every you know facility to uh, uh, to submit the user's information, yeah. sender and the receiver. Mm -hmm. So uh, this kind of push the pressure to the whole industry. But for Bitcoin, it's not. Is that definitely no doesn't care. But well, the crypto exchanges have to care, right? Yeah, they have to care. They need to operate in the regulation that their yeah. jurisdiction yeah. is offering. Yeah. And there's no real choice about that. They don't have a choice. So you think that this kind of rule will, you know, extend to the, you know, the peak point, the, the decentralized peer to peer transaction? Well, you know, eventually, mm -hmm. it's a step one, right? Then maybe you you will maybe you are worried about you know, step two, step three, and eventually you become. They want to control the you know decentralized P2P transaction. Mm. Maybe, but you can't. You can only control the non the on ramps. So the exchanges are the fiat on ramp and off ramp, right? Uh -huh. But down the road, I think it's going to be less of an issue because uh, you'll be able to trade atomically with other people. So one thing that we have in Liquid right now is uh, these atomic swaps. You can do a single chain atomic swap. Uh -huh. So once we have something like Tether in Liquid, you can just swap with other people. Oh, cool. And if you think Tether is good, if you're a trader, <laughs> then you don't need uh, to cash into, you know, fiat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, cool. So the, uh, in the, let's talk about the new settler. About what? About, about settler. Okay. And yeah, this, uh, you're saying like, uh, you want to build, I, I, first time I heard this project, I saw it, oh, this is crazy. Like, yeah. Is anyone who are using the seller to you know, receive a Bitcoin? Well, we don't have any metrics because it is a broadcast service. So uh -huh. if you're receiving the blocks, we don't know. Okay. Right. But we just know when people post photos of themselves with their satellite dish or they, yeah. they write a post about how they set it up, then yeah. we kind of know. Yeah. But the indicator we use is that Amazon is sold out of the LNB <laughs> uh, for, the, uh, for a very long time. I forgot how long, but you can't, it's hard to buy it any uh -huh. on Amazon. Yeah. So we think that there is a lot of... Uh, consumer hobbyist usage around Blockstream Satellite. Uh -huh. They want to set up a dish and experiment with it and you know, be off, be off the grid to get Bitcoin blocks. You definitely have some imagine about you know, some use case about the, you know, sending Bitcoin to a seller. Mm -hmm. Maybe like, uh, you know, I just for example, like Hong Kong, they protest for the China's control. And China used you know, some web, web cyber attack for DDoS any you know, internet infrastructure. Maybe this kind of... Uh, uh, situation people will send money outside the country mm -hmm. or in the you know big catastrophe like uh, you know storm fire do you have some interesting UK use case in your mind like you know specific well we one of the primary reasons is because we're building on Bitcoin right yeah and what we don't want is that Bitcoin what we want to avoid is the network partition for Bitcoin mm -hmm. whereby say in one country the undersea cable is cut and then if there's enough hash rate in the country or enough um, you know, usage of Bitcoin, they could potentially uh, think a transaction 
is valid when it's not processed. Uh -huh. And then when they sync up with the rest of the network, it's invalidated, right? Okay. If we're building like, things like Liquid on top of Bitcoin, we need Bitcoin to be as robust as possible. So as long as one person in the country is using Blockstream Satellite, they'll stay in sync with the rest of the network. And because you know, Liquid is anchored on top of Bitcoin, then it's better for us as well. Oh, cool. So it's, uh, it's all connected together and you avoid a, you know, yeah. kind of a, it's kind of a consortium. Hmm? Consortium. Uh, no, it's more like making sure the base layer, Bitcoin base layer is robust. Okay. So it doesn't partition. Okay. And uh, in the, so you support the Bitcoin, right? You support the Bitcoin development. Yes. In, 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 in around the world. And uh, as for you, 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 you know very well about, you know really well about Bitcoin. And then in recently, it's a lot of pe people talking about, you know, the face to launch their own coin, they want yes. to create a currency. And I think, I think uh, many people were asking you the same question about, you know, the relationship uh, between you know, Bitcoin or, or this kind of stable currency. How do you treat the Bitcoin? You think you have a definition about money, this kind of digital money? Well, I like to say Bitcoin is digital gold. Digital gold. Yeah, it's a bearer asset. You know, you, if you have control of your keys, it's your Bitcoin, right? Yeah. No one can take it from you or seize it. Yes. So that's why I like the gold analogy because people understand if I have a gold bar, it's mine. If yeah. I lose a gold bar, it's gone. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. And so, so it's more like gold, you know, store of value. Yeah, I think but, so. But uh, you also uh, develop the technology to make the Bitcoin more easy to pay. Yeah. So well, Bitcoin is digital gold, so it has all the properties of gold, like uh, store of value and just being worth something, worth something, right? Uh -huh. And all the methods of transacting it, the medium of exchange, are coming. Uh -huh. So when Bitcoin was not that valuable, it's pretty cheap to trade Bitcoin, yeah. right? To, to buy, buy coffee with Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. So in, I just did, gave the talk now, I gave the example. If uh, Bitcoin's $100, your fees, 100, um, 100 sats per V-byte fees would be 22 fees, right? 22 cents fee. But if Bitcoin is $10,000, the same amount of sats per V-byte would cost $2.20. So as uh, the system gets more valuable, the fees become more expensive, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. So you can transact it, but at different points in time, it, it changes. Yeah. That's why we need to tech like the Lightning Network or even Layer 2 like Liquid, yeah. because Liquid is meant for traders primarily. So if you're trading, you want fast block times and you also want, you ideally want stable fees too, yes. right? So you can move it quickly and cheaply. Okay, so uh, and you save uh, you solve the problem with a different layer to yeah. to you know to achieve different goal. Yeah. And uh, for let me talk about Libra. And uh, for for say Facebook, they want to achieve one uh, achieve the things together. You know, you, you can store the money in Libra. You also can pay it. Yeah. Very fast, very cheap. Yeah. So do you think that this kind of uh, you know company trying to build another digital money? The threat, uh, you know, the, the expansion of Bitcoin. Not really. Not really. Yeah. Doesn't I, matter. I, I think Bitcoin is in a league of its own. Okay. Nothing can really compete with it. Even most of the altcoins, you know, they're, they're very similar to a company. Yeah. Like if you, see, if you see Ethereum, it's almost like a company. Uh -huh. There's people behind it managing it, right? Uh -huh. And you know, the the further away you get from the top, the worse it is. It's really most coins are a company. Uh -huh. But there's nobody really controlling Bitcoin, right? It's an open source project. There's hundreds of developers contributing. We are just one of them. Okay. And no one can say, I want to change this, and then it'll just change, right? And yeah, everyone, uh, yeah, everyone can agree of that. Uh... Yeah, and, and not just that, but the users can choose. You can choose to run the software you want to choose. And okay. with the yeah. UASF, we kind of prove that the users are in control. Yeah. A lot of the developers said, you know, UASF is bad, it's dangerous. But yeah. the users said, no, forget it. We're, screw you, we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna UASF. Okay. And they started running all the nodes. So oh, cool. the users are in control of the system. Whereas something like Libra, it's very centralized, incredibly centralized. I think it's not even, I wouldn't even call it a cryptocurrency. I wouldn't call it, there's no blockchain, so you can't really call it a blockchain yeah, either. Yeah, it's a, so it's kind of like a, what kind of it's a stable coin well payments done. rail that's marketing as a crypto. Okay, but uh, speaking to the, you know, the uh, special of a Bitcoin, you can see the, this half year we have a, you know, small ball run of a Bitcoin, mm -hmm. you know, the price are triple. Yeah. Uh, we find out things is uh, Bitcoin's market share is getting more and more, and uh, the old coin can follow. Do you think that uh, you know, people treat Bitcoin more valuable compared to other old coin digital assets? Oh, definitely. Definitely. I think. Yeah. You think you know, you know, because in the 2018, 
that Bitcoin's market share is go down very very soon. Well, I don't really like market share because I can make my own coin. Oh, I yeah. can sell one, and then you know Bitcoin's market share went down. It's not but a good measurement. Really. Yeah, it's a really bad measurement, and it's confusing people because people look at they look at all the cryptos like it's a. They're all equivalent, but they're not equivalent. There's Bitcoin, and then there's many other things, yeah, yeah. right? So you can't really say market cap of the market share of Bitcoin amongst everything else because anybody can launch a coin, and that takes away market share. Yeah. You have to look at liquidity, right? Okay. Like market depth. How much money is there actually being traded on these things? If I just make my own coin, I sell you one. I have a trillion coins. I sell you one for a dollar. Did I just achieve a trillion dollar oh, yeah, yeah. market cap, right? <laughs> Bitcoin, you know, went down so far. Market, like the news, probably would say that uh -huh. Bitcoin market cap crashed. Right, <laughs> so it's a really bad indicator. Okay, it's very interesting uh, the perspective uh, for from the you know the true Bitcoin insider. And then uh, for the Libra, it's very. He says we'll become the permissionless blockchain. Well, they, the future, they, they said that? they're going to decentralize. Yeah, it, yeah you decentralize. It's uh, really hard to see how they're going to accomplish that because they're starting out from such a centralized point. Where you have to pay money to join the network, like ten million dollars per validator node. Uh, you have a massive consortium of massive tech companies. Like, I don't see any way that they can decentralize themselves in the future. Their wallet is uh, you know, KYC before you can, you have to KYC yourself before you can use their wallet. It's an official wallet. They say everyone can create their own wallet. Maybe, but uh, like, what are most people going to use? They will probably use the official yeah, wallet. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> And uh, it's just uh, I, I just can't see them becoming decentralized. You, you are you are the best guys uh, to you know understand how to you know decentralize and to do the governments. So you don't think that you know the, the twenty eight giant company or giant association will release their power to you know all the member to? It's hard. It's, it's hard. very hard. Yeah. Right. Like, Once you got the power, you, you yeah. Really like when to... when does any company decide to relinquish power? Right. It's uh, <laughs> very hard. Okay. So um, for the status of Bitcoin, what is most exciting progress in, you know, maybe happening in San Francisco this time? Well, I think the Lightning Network rollout is uh, very impressive. It grew really fast over the last two years or one and a half years. Um, we're at like 30, 39,000 channels now uh, on the network and a ton of nodes. Capacity is at all time highs. Yeah. And I think the maturity is just really coming it's uh the technology is getting mature very fast yeah i tried the blue wallet it's very amazing like mm -hmm. super fast and zero feed and transfer from the bitcoin and the yeah. lighting channel so um do you have a next project that you need want to build on the bitcoin or any new side chain? Well, well my main focus and a, a major focus for blockstream is the liquid network liquid network yeah so okay. next step is having um support for liquid on our mobile wallet green oh uh, blockstream nice. green uh -huh. and um uh, from there, we'll see what happens. But yeah. we can actually have Lightning on top of a liquid asset. Oh, okay. So uh -huh. if you issue a, a stable coin in liquid, uh -huh. and there's enough liquidity, the, those users can actually create their own Lightning network on top of that okay. token. So can't wait to see the Lightning network grow up. There's a lot of uh, you know money sticking that into the channel, and channel is going, network is forming right now. Yeah. So very exciting about that. So. It's really happy to have Sensor Mao, and uh, we hope that we can, you know, have a more conversation in the future. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and uh, it's first time you come to Taiwan, right? No, I've been here a few times. A few times. Yeah. So maybe next time we hold a conference or we have, uh, you know, any meetup there, yeah. Cyberpunk meetup, any big corner I want to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds okay. good. Thank you. So it's nice to talk with you. Nice talking.